Limitations of the inter of the current internet. There is a bandwidth limitation. Uh, there's very slow during peak hour services. Quality of service limitations. Sometimes latency. Network architecture limitations. Uh, identical requests are processed uh, individually. So that's a limitation. Uh, wired internet, copper, expensive fiber optic cables. So these are limitations making the internet to be a little bit. But maybe in the future, you know, they say about this. You know, if we can go over, no more. If you can find other communication methods, make the internet much faster, how will it change the world? Internet 2 project. A consortium of 350 institutions collaborating to facilitate. We want to have a revolutionary internet technologies. The goal, how can we create a leading edge, very high speed network for the national research community, enable revolutionary internet applications, distribute and collaborative computing environments, for science, health, art, humanities initiatives. So that's a project where how can we make the internet to be even more faster? First mile and the last mile GENI initiative uh, proposed by this NSF to develop new core functionality for the internet, most significant private networks, fiber optic, uh, trunk line, bandwidth, uh, first mile and wireless internet service last mile. So imagine if internet is wireless at a very high speed to the whole world. How will that make the internet? You guys know what's a fiber optic? Yeah. Fiber optic, it's a cable, but inside the cable, there is no wire. There is just this, you know, you know, light. It just allow lights to go. And uh, it carry bulk traffic over long distance. Fiber optics cable, hundreds of uh, glass, strand that uses light to transmit data, uh, substantial investments in fiber optic by telecommunication firms in the last decades. Uh, the last mile, internet backbone to users' computers, smartphones, and so on, two different basic types of wireless telephone-based mobile phones and wireless local W uh, LAN-based. Uh, so here, the internet, once you have it mobile, everyone, then this is going to be wireless internet access and network technologies. Do you guys know what's a Wi-Fi? You know what's a WiMAX? Wi it's, it's a higher speed, medium range bandwidth. And then Bluetooth. It's also used for personal connectivity between devices, the internet, low speed, short range. Wireless access, computers, mobile phones, internet. Future internet, uh, latency solutions, uh, diversity, uh, which is differentiated quality of service. You know, diff serve. Uh, how can we make very good quality service internet? Guaranteed service level and lower error rates. Sometimes, uh, you know, this has been a, a, another debate. Uh, some of the internet service providers, if they receive two requests, you pay $30 a month, you pay $10 a month, I give you the internet faster than this. You see, how much you pay, how much I give you internet faster. Do you see? So what do you guys think? Is this bad? People who pay less, they get slower? Is it fair? People who pay... Yeah, so sometimes maybe, you know, they, they do the different prices for the bandwidth, how much total yes, amount you download. Yes, and sometimes based on, you know, uh, how much uh, you pay, how much speed you get. Let's say you get one mega and you get one megabyte speed, but uh, you have uh, high priority. So we give you high priority responses. And we also have got this declining cost and I IoT. Do you guys know what's an IoT? Internet of things and objects connected via sensors. RFIDs to the internet. Uh, we talked about this last class, right? Uh, this is the web history. Do you guys remember Netscape? Anyone know Netscape? Wow. Netscape, it used to be before Internet Explorer, before Chrome. You see? <coughs> it's a browser. And then uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer was in 95. And then uh, we have this hypertext. Do you know what's a hypertext? Like this link is the hypertext. So a text that if it's, it's hyper, if you click on it, it will take you. Uh, markup language, the uh, HTML, that's the language that uh, computer browsers understand to display. XML, it's designated to describe data and information. It tags users defined by users. Uh, so we've got this HTML5 ready for prime time. Do you guys know what's HTML5? What is HTML? 
It's a new version of HTML. What's the power of HTML5? It works on more platforms. Do you see? Do you remember in the old days that you used to have uh, certain programmers in certain languages? Remember in the old days we used to have people who speak Arabic, people who speak English, people who speak French. Now we all speak the same language. When it comes to internet programming and uh, and they all speak this HTML5 where it will understand any platform. Whether you're coming from a Unix, from a Windows, from a Mac, it can work. A web server software, uh, that's software that works on the internet. Let's say maybe Facebook is a software that works on the internet. Web server is the uh, computer that will serve the others. And the web client, the person who will actually uh, access uh, the stuff in the server. Web browsers, you guys know the web browser, the main uh, function is to display web pages. Uh, you know, Internet Explorer is like 54. Uh, do you know Mozilla Firefox? How many people don't know Firefox? Okay. And then we've got Google Chrome and Apple Safari. Internet uh, features, uh, uh, these are some features. You guys know email, instant messaging, search engine, online forum, chat, streaming media, cookies. You guys know what's a cookie? That's good. So this is uh, email, uh, instant message, uh, search engines. Uh, how Google works. Number one, you go and you write with your search. Google web server will receive the search request. Then Google will use its one to two million PC link together, connected together to the internet to take, compute the inquiry and produce the search results. Can you imagine? Two million other computers will work on your search request. To, dis to find where is the information you want. And then the search request will be sent to Google Index Server, will maintain the data about the web pages that contain the keywords matching the query, location of these files, and then it will use Google uh, PageRank. Do anyone have heard of Google PageRank? Google PR. Uh, Google, they have in their logarithm, every website they have a rank. So this website rank one, this website rank two. This website ranked 10 or maybe 12, which is a very low number. So here, I show you the importance of this website or the popularity of this page. Solving an equation that millions of variables and terms, they're likely to be the best page for your query. You see? So if you write their face, it will immediately remember Facebook. Why? Because Facebook has a rank of high. Let's say Facebook has rank of one. And then if you write face, then probably you're talking about Facebook. You see, because that's very popular. You see, uh, maybe there is a website no one knows that talks about faces. It will not be there because that has a zero page rank. And then small text similar, uh, uh, summaries are prepared for each web page. And that's what you see on the results. And results delivered to users uh, tend to a page. And then uh, that's the end. <coughs> online forums, you guys know an online forum? Uh, like about like discussion groups or uh, like uh, online chat. You guys know anyone have used IM internet messaging? Anyone use streaming media? Your music videos. Uh, you see anything that's live? Uh, allow users to uh, begin playing media files before files is fully downloaded, so you can actually see while it's downloading. Cookies. A cookie is a small text file deposited by websites on user computers to store information about the user accessed when user next visit to website. Remember, if you go to this website, tomorrow you come back, they remember you. How do they know? Because there's some sort of a cookie that allows them. Can help personalize websites. Remember, if you log in, you put your username and password, they immediately know who you are. Therefore, they make the website according to what you need. And it can pose privacy threats. Why? Because they can store things that you do. So, so, and they can take this information and sell it. Wow, that's too bad. Web 2.0 features and services. It's an online social networks. Uh, services that support communication among networks of friends and peers. You guys know what's a blog? Yeah. Uh, personal websites, uh, chronological entries. Uh, RSS, re uh, really simple syndication. What's an RSS? It's a program that allows users to have digital content automatically sent to their computers over the internet. 
So sometimes anyone has follow any RSS? Say for example, uh, you love uh, you know this type of music. You can subscribe to RSS of this music. Anytime these people they produce any content to be sent to your uh, you know. Uh, you just need to have an RSS uh, reader. You know, if you search RSS reader, then, then it basically downloads this information. Reader. Reader. Uh, yeah, you can have a notification from an RSS. You guys know podcasts? Audio presentation stores in an audio file. This is becoming more popular where, uh, you know, podcasts. Anyone uh, read Wiki? You know, there's a Wikipedia, which is the big, but there's also wikis, any website. Maybe here uh, you can make a wiki where, all, you know, a wiki is like an encyclopedia that anyone can contribute to. Uh, music and video services, online video, uh, uh, digital video on demand, like Netflix we talked about. Internet telephony, voice over IP. Anyone use internet voice uh, over IP? Uh, voice over IP uses internet to transmit voice. Video conferences, video chat. Anyone, you have a friend and you chat, uh, you know, with a uh, you know, voice and uh, video, uh, web apps, widgets, uh, gadgets, lots of other apps. Intelligent personal assistant software that will interact with the users through voice commands. Anyone have used the Siri? You, you, you command, you know, play, take a picture, uh, Google now. Uh, mobile apps. Uh, uses mobile apps uh, has exploded. 60% of online shoppers are mobile shoppers. Increased user purchasing from the tablets, platforms, iOS and iPads, Android, Blackberry, app marketplaces. Anyone use Google Play, Apple's App Store, uh, uh, Brim's App World, Windows Phone Marketplace. Uh, these are becoming mobiles. And here we've got a class discussion, apps for everything, the app ecosystem. What are apps and why are they so popular? Do you use any app regularly? Which ones? What are their functions? Social media, socializing. What are the benefits of these apps? Communication. Disadvantages? Are there any benefits, disadvantages to the uh, proprietary nature of the Apple platform? The you guys know an Apple platform, it is completely proprietary. Mm -hmm. So only Apple people, they control what's in it and what's not in it. Yes. They have full control. Unlike Android, Android is an open system. Anyone can go and make Android. Yes. If you want to see the code of Android, you can yes. see it. Okay. If you want to modify it, you can modify it. If you want to change the logo of the Android, you can change that. But when it comes to the Apple, it is 100% closed and only Apple people know it. And uh, therefore, uh, they have, what the benefits do we have with that? Security. You know, maybe security, you know, less people can play with it. And what disadvantage? It's restricted to certain people. You know, it's only Apple people, they control the world through their, uh, uh. all right, so, so that's the 